In the intro to this particular part, and if you didn't watch the intro to part C, you may want to do so. What that's going to do is give you a kind of a broad general concept of what linear inequalities mean and what they are. Uh, well, we learnt the following, that a linear inequality is a relationship between two expressions in which one is less than or greater than or less than or equal to or greater than or equal to the other expression. And the solution set of an inequality is the set of all possible solutions. So because one expression can be greater than, less than, greater than or equal to, less than or equal to another expression in lots of places, uh, the solution set is represented on a graph because a whole bunch of possible, so this entire, all the coordinates in this section here would represent, or in that region there, would represent points where negative 2 times x plus 5 times y is greater than or equal to 10. So it's a whole range of values. And that's what inequalities do. They give you a whole range of possible answers. And the way that we do that is on a graph. Uh, so what we're going to do here is get practical and do a number of examples to graph linear inequalities. So this first one we are going to determine where is, where, what points are negative 2 times x plus 5 times y greater than 10 at? And the first thing I want to show you is the solution. Here is the solution. These are all the points up here and in this region where negative 2 times x plus 5 times y is greater than 10. The first thing you want to do to graph linear inequality is to figure out the boundary between where those expressions are greater than or less than. Uh, and what that is is where the two expressions are equal. So we would like to start, you're going to graph <clears throat> where negative x plus 5y is equal to 10. That will be the boundary line. Okay, what we learned is this is going to be a line, and to have a line we need two points. So to figure out the y-intercept, which we did in uh, part b, we're going to substitute x equals 0. So if I substitute x equals 0, I have negative 2 times 0 plus 5 times y equals 10, or 5y equals 10. If I divide by the coefficient 5, I'll have that y is equal to 2 is my y-intercept. Uh, my x-intercept, in this case, will be where y is equal to 0. So that would be negative 2 times x plus 5 times 0 equals 10, or negative 2 times x equals 10 because 5 times 0 is 0. And if we divide by the coefficient negative 2, we would have x is equal to negative 5, and that is your <clears throat> x-intercept for that particular boundary line. Now in this case, because there is no or equal to sign, uh, what that means is that the boundary is not included because it's not included or equal to the boundary. So that means that what we're going to do is make our boundary line dotted, which wasn't shown to you uh, in the solution set that I showed you because the software that I have can't dot the boundary line. But this Boundary line should be dashed or dotted because it's not included. And the next thing we do is we want to find out which side of this boundary is where negative 2x plus 5y is greater than 10. So you can take any point on either side of the boundary. And generally, if it's not on the boundary line, uh, you want to choose the point 0, 0. It's the easiest one to choose. So we are going to test to see if 0, 0 is a solution. So I'm going to substitute 0, 0. So 0 in for x and 0 in for y. We're going to test and ask, is negative 2 times 0 plus 5 times 0 greater than 10? Or is 0 plus 0 greater than 10? Is 0 greater than 10? The answer to that is no. So what that means is that this whole side of the boundary line, none of these points would have the relationship where negative 2 times x plus 5 times y is greater than 10. What that means by default is that the other side would have the points that would give you a solution. So all of those points are solutions to the inequality. Or and I can show you an example if you'd like. I won't show you that in the future. Uh, let's just take this point for example. This is the point right here, 0 and 4. So if I substitute 0 and 4 into here, so what we're asking ourselves is, is negative 2 times 0 plus 5 times 4 greater than 10? And that's 0. Is 0 plus 20 greater than 10? Is 20 greater than 10? Yes. So any point in that region would have negative 2x plus 5y greater than 10. Now in the next question right beside it, you will see it's the exact same 
inequality. So this inequality highlighted in yellow is exactly the same as this inequality highlighted in yellow. I just want to talk to uh, the difference in the symbols. So the solution set would be exactly the same. So the intercepts would be the same. You would also still have a dotted line. Uh, the only difference here is in the symbology, and most important is what we're seeing here, highlighted in blue, is that x and y belong to i, and what i represents is integers. So integers are only numbers that aren't decimals, so negative and positive whole numbers, so negative 1, negative 2, etc. So what that means is in this solution region, which we already figured out how to do, only the integers are solutions. So what you will see is in that solution region, just putting solution dots on all of the points that are integers, because the points between those integers are not solutions because they aren't integers. And so you'd put dots everywhere in this solution region uh, as I'm doing, so etc. That's the only difference. It uh, has to do with the fact that it's integers. All right, let's do one more, and then we'll save the other two for the next lesson. Uh, and this next one, we want to know where is y less than or equal to negative 2x plus 4. So the first thing we want to do is graph the boundary line, where is y equal to negative 2x plus 4. So in order to get the y-intercept, we substitute x equals 0 into the relationship. So we have y is equal to negative 2 times 0 plus 4, which is y is equal to 0 plus 4, or y is equal to 4. That's your y-intercept, so that's right there. Uh, your next one, to get the x-intercept, we're going to substitute y equals 0. So you'd have 0 is equal to negative 2x plus 4. And we'd algebraically, the opposite of adding 4 is subtracting 4. We'd have negative 4 is equal to negative 2x. And we divide by the coefficient negative 2. So x is equal to negative 4 divided by negative 2, which is positive 2. So that's positive 2. Now because, just before we graph the line, <clears throat> since it's or equal to, that means that your boundary line is included, uh, which means that it's going to be a solid line because the two expressions are equal to each other on this boundary line. So those boundary points will be included. Uh, next, let's go ahead and figure out. So we want to know which side of that boundary line. Is it this side or this side that represents solutions to our inequality? We can choose any point we want to. Again, I hope it makes sense to choose the point 0, 0 most often if it's not on your boundary line. And we're going to go ahead and substitute it into here to see we're asking ourselves, is 0 less than or equal to negative 2 times 0 plus 4. So is 0 less than or equal to 0 plus 4, or is 0 less than or equal to 4? And the answer there is yes. So in this case, this side is a yes. All those points where the, side, where the point 0, 0 would be a yes. So the solution to the inequality would be all the points to this side of the boundary.